Bak çıkıyor diyor. Bak. Şimdi Lord Street of Night. Parmağı rahatsız etmem. Guru Dev Şile Bhakti Prabhupyan Keshav Vashvani Maharaj. And Mahesh Shikshya Guru Om Vishnu Paat Sishri Mat Bhakti Vedan Vashvani Maharaj. You know that especially how in a couple of years after taking his sannyas in Keshavji Gaudiyamat by my Guru Dev, established all over the world in oceans and on the mountains, in forest and everywhere, so many teacher centers, teaching centers, and also translated so many books, he wrote so many books. And everywhere he preached the mission of Srila Rupa Goswami, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his Guru Dev, Srila Bhakti Prabhyan Kesha Goswami Maharaj. So you are all, myself too, are debtor to him. Otherwise, no preaching in Western countries. Now those who are coming new one, also by reading his books, by his names, especially those who are coming to me, only they have, they know that I have so much friendship with him, I have served him. So all are coming also. Due to him, so we are doing pranam in his lotus feet. You know that he wanted to preach the purport of Srimad Bhagavad Gita and all epics. He was not different from Rupa Goswami in opinion not different to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, not different to Srila Bhakti, Siddhan Saraswati Goswami Maharaj, and to Gurudev, our Gurudev. He took sannyas from him and he inspired that you should, you must preach in Western and Eastern countries. So he began his preaching from America, hmm? from a tree, and then preached over the whole world. Now, we should come to our subject that, <coughs> you know, Vyas Dev, his name is also Krishna Dvaipa and Vyas. Because he took birth in the island of a Jamuna, Krishna Dvaipayan, the dweep of Krishna Jamuna, by the father Parashar Rishi. He was the manifestation of Krishna, Narayan. And then, by the mercy of Krishna, he divided one Veda to four and he manifested so many Upanishads or so many Purans and so many other books, Mahabharata like and in Mahabharata Gita. And one day he was sitting on his, in his ashram, Shamya Prash, on the bank of the river Hagirati in Badrik Ashram, Alkananda. And he was somewhat lamenting. He was thinking that why my soul is not satisfied. Translation is going on. 
No need of giving time. Very good. This process is very good. So, he was thinking, what is lacking in me? That my soul is not satisfied. What is that thing? But he could not determine. Why I am not so satisfied? And in the meantime, fortunately, his Guru Narada came to that place and saw that he was very something. He read his face and then asked, Oh, my dear boy, they ask, why you are worried? You have written so many Purans, you have divided Veda, you know everything, Dharma, Artha, Kam, Moksha and other things. But why not satisfy? Guru, they have told, um, they ask, they have told, oh, I'm taking your uh, shelter in your lot of feet. Of the disease, you can decide. I cannot, because I am a patient. He does not know patient. But any good doctor, they can decide what is the disease. And then, they have they've told. As you have written, all the Vedas, Quran and everything, as you have hmm, divided all the Vedas, you have manifested so many Upanishads. Written, Mahabharata, Gita even. But you have not glorified Krishna and his pastimes. As you have glorified Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha, <laughs> liberation. Hmm? You have not written that way. Wow. The mother of Krishna, Supreme Lord, hmm? his mother Yasoda, and Nanda Baba, you have not written that Krishna is, Krishna is Supreme Personality of Godhead. Have you? Never. Have you written that this uh, the powerful Krishna having all appulences, very powerful, he can create in a moment all universes, millions and millions. You have, read, have you written? And he is the head of all the corners. Hmm? Have you written that he used to fight with his Sakha, Gopal, and they used to defeat you? Defeat Krishna? Never. Have you told that the father of Krishna? Hmm? He used to tell that, bring my shoes for prudential. And he used to take on his head and dancing he used to come. Have you written that Yasodama chastises her and binded in the mortar? And he was weeping bitterly. Have you written that Krishna? told himself, Oh gopis, oh, I cannot repay you in millions of lives. Huh? And he used to take the dust of lotus feet of Radhika. Have you? Never. Then what you have written? Nothing. So you are not satisfied. Please write this and then you will be happy. Gurudev, how can I? Oh, take shelter of bhakti. What is bhakti? To surrender. If you are totally surrendered to your Gurudev and Krishna, then this is bhakti yoga. If not surrendered, nothing will come. So then he 
shut down after Narad went and then Obdas Dev sat in trance, trance and he surrendered himself in the Lord feet of Krishna. Oh, you are Malli, Supreme Lord. There is no two gods, Malli one, and all are subordinate to Krishna. So you should take shelter and then he took shelter. Oh Bhakti Devi, oh Krishna, I am taking your shelter. Please manifest your past, sweet past tense. And then he saw Krishna with all the gopis, all the associates of Krishna, father, mother and oh, all Bal Gopals. He also saw that those who are forgetting me, they are going to down and punished by Mahamaya, the shadow of Yoga Maya. And then he saw all the sweet pastimes of Krishna from birth to Dwarka Lila. And then he wrote Jasya Vai Sruyama Yang Krishna Paramapurush Bhakti Rupa Paddhate Punsak Shok Moha Bhayapa. If anyone here from a bona fide guru, the sweet and powerful oh, pastimes of Krishna, very soon. There are all kinds of fear, sufferings, endless chain of birth and death. Quickly go away and his life will be what, successful. Shabai punsan paro dharmo jato bhakti radho khaje ahe tukka pratihata jayatma samprasidati Your soul will be satisfied. If you are doing endless and uh, unbroken uh, under, uh, uh, all continuous, the past full and very sweet past times of Krishna, then your Atma will be Satisfied. Satisfied. Otherwise, no. You should also know <coughs> what is Bhakti Job. And also, you should hear the sweet pastimes of Krishna. Not only our Siddhanta will do Gyane Prayash Mudupasya Namanta. Oh, don't think that by our knowledge we can achieve Krishna. By surrendering. And if you are surrendered, and where you are, here this with pastimes of Krishna, only it can say. Knowledge cannot do. Whole knowledge of Bhagavata Bhagavat and Gita may come, but they cannot save us. In a moment, Maya can come and can affect you. But if sweet pastimes are there and you are remembering and chanting the name, very soon they will go out and your life will be successful. So, we should know about Vyas Dev and his Guru Narodev. How happened? How they met? And what is the effect of Guru's association like Guru like Narodev? I think Shamrani will speak about their speakings. Narod? Yes. 
meeting with here. Because we are beginning from Ma Srimad Bhagavatam. The glorification of a Guru. Guru, guru Nishtha is the backbone of Bhakti. If no Guru Nishtha, no Bhakti at all. So first of all, in Srimad Bhagavat, Chaitanya Chaitamrita, where everywhere, oh, there is glorification of Guru Tattva. Alva Gyanam Timirandasya Gyanam Janaslavaya Chaksurun Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Guruvena Shiva Gurudev has ordered me to speak something about the conversation between Narada and Vyasdev. Try to make sound system more good. Srila Vyasdev taught us by his own example, although he is a literary incarnation of the Supreme Person, it's okay, it's too bad. Although Srila Vyasdev is a literary incarnation of the Supreme Lord, and he knows everything, and he's realized everything, he showed us by example that one must accept a bona fide guru in order to realize the Lord and in order to become free from sufferings and sorrows. Narada Muni played the role of the spiritual master of Srila Vyasti. And he himself Although he is an eternal associate of the Lord, he himself set the example of accepting a bona fide guru. In order to increase the faith of Srila Vyastev, Sri Narada Muni told about his own life. He said that in a past life, he was the son of an ordinary maidservant. And she happened to be serving great sages during the four months of the year, during the rainy season, when the sages would stay in one place and give Harikata to the residents of that place. So Narada Muni's mother was serving them as a menial servant. So Narada Muni had the opportunity to also serve them, to take the remnants of their prasadam and to do other menial services. He was thinking, I want to give my whole life to these great sages, like the four Kumaras, four great sages who are the sons of the original personality of this universe, Lord Brahma. But he could not think how to fully give his whole life because he had his mother and his attachment for his mother. By the arrangement of the Lord, his mother was bitten by a snake and she died. So Narada Muni took this as the mercy of the Lord and he left that place and went to meditate. He had been sufficiently serving very submissively the four Kumaras and other sages called Bhakti Vedantas, those who know that the end of all knowledge is Bhakti. So he went and he meditated and performed austerities for many thousands of years. And because of his past association with pure devotees, and they gave him a special mantra, and he was chanting that mantra. After so many years, the Lord himself appeared to him. Narada Muni is telling all this to his disciple Vyaste. And the Lord appeared to him for just one moment, and then disappeared. And then Narada began to weep incessantly, feeling great separation. Then the Lord again appeared to him, but this time not in his form, but as an aerial voice. And he told him,
because you have slight material desires left, not full of desires like we, but he had a desire to meditate on the Lord in a sacred place in seclusion. So his desire was in the mode of goodness, not like ours in the mode of passion and ignorance. He was desiring to go to movies and lust, illicit sex, gambling, meat eating, taking of intoxication, profit adoration and distinction. He had a very slight material desire in goodness. So the Lord told him that as long as your desire remains, subtle as it is, you'll not be able to see me again. To purify yourself, you should chant my glories everywhere. Chant and sing and remember me. And in this way, being enchanted by my pastimes, you'll become completely pure. Then you'll be able to see me always, forever. So Narada followed that instruction and gradually he became so pure that he received transcendental knowledge and all mystic powers, mystic powers like being able to reach out to another planet and get a fruit from another planet becoming heavier than a universe, being able even to create a universe. So many mystic powers as a byproduct of his pure devotion, and he got transcendental knowledge of the Lord and this world as a byproduct of his devotion. Then he left his body, and immediately at the same time, simultaneously got a spiritual body, which is able to travel throughout all the material universes and all the spiritual universes. And forever he's playing his transcendental vena instrument and chanting the glories of the Lord. So he's explaining all this to Shula Vyastev. And Vyastev followed his instructions. Narada told him, that you should go in trance, surrender to my instructions, and go in a trance of bhakti yoga. In this way, you'll be able to see the Lord and all of his pastimes, from beginning to his last pastimes of this world, his unlimited pastimes. And then all these pastimes will come in your heart, and you'll be able to write them. The book that uh, Shula Vyaste wrote after this on, on getting the instructions of Narada is called Samadhi Pasya. That is, his book is written in his transcendental Samadhi. It's actually the coming of Krishna himself. Srimad Bhagavatam is the form of Radha and Krishna themselves and all of their pastimes coming in the heart and revealing themselves in the heart of Vyastas. So actually Srimad Bhagavatam is written by Krishna himself. So when one has the association of pure devotees and accepts initiation and becomes fully surrendered, this is called Guru Padashraya. He surrenders to any bona fide guru who is as good as God, because he's a manifestation of God. When one finds such a bona fide guru and surrenders to him, then the Lord fully reveals himself. And as Srila Gurudev said, such a person can do anything. So Vyaste became the guru of not only one universe, but many millions of universes. And just like you have a central point, and then the diameter from a circle. You have a whole circle, and the circle has a central point, and then a diameter going through that central point called the radius, and then to the other circumference. So Srila Vyastev is like that diameter. Radha and Krishna, the supreme absolute truth, are the center of all existence. And Srila Vyastev makes diameters throughout 
out every single point of material existence. And his message, his Shastras, especially the culmination of all his Shastras, Srimad Bhagavatam, goes and reaches and purifies every nook and corner of the whole material existence. And all bona fide gurus, all bona fide spiritual masters are actually manifestations of Srila Vyastev. And their words are so powerful, just like throwing a rock in the water and it makes concentric circles and reaches every shore of that pond. So the pure devotee, when he speaks, the dust from the lotus feet of Krishna come out from his mouth and he purifies the entire universe. So all bona fide gurus in the line of Vyastev are manifestations of Vyastev, just like our Srila Prabhupada and Srila Gurudev. And even more so, they're manifestations of Nityananda Prabhu, manifestations of Baladev manifestations of Radha and Krishna personally. They're not human beings. They're not even living beings. They're actually expansions of Radha and Krishna in the form of Guru, that kind of manifestation. Therefore, they know everything past, present, and future. Srila Gurudev said, I can simply look at your forehead and tell you 10,000 lives past and 10,000 lives future. So we're very fortunate to have such a bona fide spiritual master. Right, Lee? So the essence of Srimad Bhagavat is bhakti. But this bhakti has been divided into two. Krishna is object of bhakti. And all the bhaktas, beginning from even from Dhruva, up to Gopis and up to Srimati Radhika Madanakha Bhav. These two are Asya. One is Asya, one is Vishya. Krishna is what? Bhokta, object of our enjoyment. And all the bhaks, what I told, beginning to talk, they are container, reservoir of Krishna bhakti. Especially in Bhagavat, the love and love and affection of Gopi, that is bhakti, is explained. Oh, we cannot take any benefit from Krishna, never, because he is enjoyer, and we are not enjoyer, but in to be enjoyed. So we will have to take shelter of the works of Krishna. We can take shelter of Rupa Goswami. We can take shelter of any Brajavasi, especially the mid-servant of Radhika. Then we can realize what is the aim and object of Srimad Bhagavatam. So even Uddhav Maharaj had did pranam to gopis. In the end, not to Krishna. Asamaho charanarim shamhamsha. Jabai siyachita jadi. Aptakami. Bande nanda brajai strinam. Padrinum abhiknasha. I am doing pranam in the lotus seat of gopis that even I can touch a, a manu. manu just of the Lord's feet of gopis. So, 
in Srimad Bhagavatam, especially, has been told the Ashraya Bhakti. That is the Bhakti of devotees, the glorification and the life of the devotees of Krishna. And for this reason, it has been told in Srimad Bhagavatam, Naitak Samachare Tujatu, Manasapihi Yanishwara. We should not follow Krishna like an enjoyer, enjoyer. But you should remember the sweet pastimes of Krishna with bhakta, devotees, and especially gopis. Otherwise, you may die very powerful poison. Krishna, Krishna himself, his activities. So try to follow the activities of devotees. So first we should come to this point. What is bhakti? That bhakti. Which are divided into two. And in the beginning of Srimad Bhagavat, it has been told, Shabai Punsa Paro Dharmo Jato Bhakti Radhokha what is the meaning and you should explain coming here in front. This phone is not uh, working. My on Monday we will be at second microphone. Why you could not Managed from the start uh, Just because they told us that uh, here they had everything. So what they should they have taken this very seriously. Then everything was there. But you are not so much serious. I think tomorrow so many devotees will come from England, here and Italy and so many places. The question you can take this if you will. The question may come, what is the ultimate good? In other words, we have, so, we have energy and we have time. These are resources which we have. And where, in what direction should we invest those resources? This is another way of asking the same question. What is the ultimate good for all human beings? This same question has, um, has been there since the very beginning of human existence. And so many philosophers for many hundreds and thousands of years have pondered this very question. <coughs> In his Srimad Bhagavatam, Shri Vyasadeva answers this very same question for us. Savai pung sang paro dharmo yato bhakti radhokchaje ahaituki apratiyata yayatma suprasidati what is the ultimate good? The ultimate good is that by which human beings can attain pure bhakti unto the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. What is that pure bhakti? Ahaituki apratiyata. There are two conditions that have to be met. Firstly, ahaituki it must be causeless. In this world we see that all love and affection has a material cause behind it. It's conditional. If that condition is broken, or if that condition is better fulfilled somewhere else, that bond of love and affection no longer exists. It's cut. But the love and affection of Krishna, of Krishna's associates towards Krishna, is not like that. Shri Rupa Goswami explains, 
What is what is Prem? He gives the shlok. Sarvata dvang sarahita yadyapi dvang sakarane tadbhava bhandana sonu saprema parikirtita. The affection, the love and affection between a young man and a girl, which is so strong that even if there's all reason for that relationship to break, still it doesn't break but only becomes stronger. This kind of love and affection does not exist in this material world. It only exists between the associates of Krishna and Krishna himself. So, pure bhakti is causeless. It can never be broken. Also, it is continuous. Nirantar. Like honey flowing from a jar. If you pour honey from a jar, it flows down in a thick, continuous, unbroken stream. So in the same way, pure bhakti is not something that is done for a certain few hours. It's not done for the two hours that we may chant, or four hours that we may chant. But it's continuous, day and night. A person who has pure bhakti will eat for Krishna. When he sleeps, he'll sleep for Krishna. When he works, when he thinks, whatever he does, everything is simply for Krishna. Causeless and uninterrupted. And only this kind of bhakti, yayatma suprasidati, can satisfy, properly satisfy the soul. In this world, we try so hard to be happy. We try, we may try to accumulate wealth. We may try to gain position. We may think that we can achieve happiness by setting up a family and enjoying the company of a partner, either a young boy or a young girl. And we invest our energy in that. But every time, happiness eludes us. We think happiness is around the corner, but it never comes. And we are frustrated again and again. But Shri Vyasadeva is saying that this pure bhakti can really satisfy the self. This is what we are all looking for. It is the ultimate good. But one thing. <coughs> First, Angushiniyat. First, you will have to hear, not to read. Reading will not do. You will read so, so many times Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamritam, all the books of Siddharup Goswami and all other Goswami. Oh, it will not do. Hmm? You, mu you will have to must uh, hear from a bona fide guru serving him. Tadvidhi pranipad pariprasnena sevaya. Otherwise, the pure guru cannot help you. Tasmat gurum prapatti. You should take shelter of a bona fide guru. He can. He can take all your doubts and he is expert in all Veda, Siddhanta and also he has some realization of Krishna and Krishna praying. He has given up all the worldly attachment and desires. Then he is Guru. Otherwise, no. A bogus guru cannot keep all these things. So guru who can fall down, he can deviate from his guru, uh, the guru teachings and thoughts and life. For he is not guru, he was not guru. If anyone has taken shelter of a bogus guru at first unknowingly, but he thinks, sir, oh, I received a month from him. That guru coming from Swamiji, Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj. What harm? What harm? Someone can tell that, oh, we can read so many books, and the books are our guru. Like Sikhs, Sikh, 
They don't have guru. Bautha have no guru. So, we may think like this. No need of guru. Oh, Krishna is there, Supreme Lord and myself. What is the use of guru? Om Gyan Timurandasya Gananjana Shalakaya Chakshu Unmilitam Jena Tazmai Shri Guru De Namaha Vanchaka Paturu Vyascha Kripasan Bevacha So all over the scriptures it is stated the utmost importance of accepting bona fide guru. In Upanishads it is stated Tat Vigyanatam Saguru Me Bhavigachat Samit Panishrochim Brahmanishtam That if one wants happiness in life, then tat viginatam sagurum eva bigachet. Eva bigachet means that one must approach a bona fide guru. Samit pani shrutim brahmanishtam. That one should approach such spiritual master in a what very, very... Mother? <laughs> your daughter? How many daughters you have? <laughs> one should approach such spiritual master in very, very humble way. Samit Pani Shrutyam Nistam. Coming um, and pre with preparations for offering for fire sacrifice. This means that one should come offering one's heart to Guru. That doing Guru Padashraya. That, oh Guru Dev, my body, my mind, my heart that all the love and affection that I have in this world, I'm offering to you. But what kind of guru? That guru who himself, he has heard from his guru in disciplic succession. He has undergone the process of hearing, and he's Brahmanishtam, that he's fixed in Brahman. But what is this Brahman? This Brahman is... Brahman, Brahman. Brahman. Not Brahma. Brahman. Brahma. Brahma. No. Brahma. <laughs> Brahma. Don't use it. Brahma. 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 Uh, yeah. <laughs> and he's Krishna. That Brahma. And that Brahma is Krishna. Para Brahman. Brahma. Para Brahma. <laughs> that is Krishna. <laughs> that also. Is what is the meaning of Shrotriya? Shrotriya means uh, who is heard, heard, heard. What? That he has heard from his guru in the simple succession. And oh, he heard. knows all, he has heard all the Veda Siddha, Srimad Bhagavat and all of us. And he can remove all the doubts of devotees. That is Shrotriya. And Brahmanishtam? That he is fixed in Parabrahma. Not just Brahman. In he had realized Brahma, Krishna, and his love and affection. He is Brahma, uh, Brahmanishta. 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 Oh. In Srimad Bhagavatam, 11th canto, also the qualification of Sadguru. This is explained. Tasmat Gurum Papadita Gigyasusre Uttamam. Shabde Parichanishnatam Brahmani Upasamasrayam. That Tasmat Guru Papajita, again, that one should surrender to Sadguru. Gigyasusre uh, Uttamam. If one wants to get that which is beyond this material world, Uttam, that transcendental happiness. And what are the qualifications of such Guru? Tasmat Guru Papajita Gigyasusre Uttamam. Shabde Parichanishnatam Brahmani Upasamasrayam. That, first of all, he is. He has realized the purpose of the scriptures, that he is a realized soul. That not only does he know scripture, but he has realized Bhakti Tattva. He has realized Maya Tattva. He has realized Krishna Tattva. That he has realized his own Suru, and he also has realization of Krishna. Also, um, Shabde Pare Brahmani, that he is completely conversant in the Vedic scriptures, and within his heart, there's no desire for material sense gratification. That these three qualifications are there. That he has full realization. Realization of himself, 
realization of the Supreme Lord, realization of the scriptures. He knows the scriptures thoroughly and within his heart, no material desires. Can a guru like this can fall down? No, such guru, they never fall down. Because such guru, he is endowed with Surup Shakti. That is Sadguru means that Sandini Shakti, his heart is saturated with Sandini Shakti. On the platform of Sandini Shakti, there's Ladini, the pleasure potency of the Lord, and Sanvish Shakti. So such guru, there's no chance of such guru falling down. In such guru, he's able to give Paramatic Shraddha. It's explained that there are three types of personalities like this. Earlier, Shamrani Dini, she gave reference to Narada Muni. That Narada Muni, after coming in contact with the Bhaktivedantas, then he went and he chanted the mantra which was given. And he achieved the stage of Bhav. His hairs were standing on end. Tears were flowing from his eyes. He had darshan of Lord Vishnu within his heart. But there was still some kasoy, some impediment. What was that impediment? That he had the um, desire to meditate in a very um, sacred place, in a place of mode of goodness. So he's called um, Murchit Kasoy. Then, is Kasaya or Shlipi? What is the meaning of Murchit Kasai? Murchit Kasai means that there's some impediment, but very, very subtle. It is not like um, some material desires that we're having. But it is a very um, subtle thing that is there within the heart that's like in the sleeping stage, which is not manifest. That by association, then this Kasai very quickly also it will be removed. Then the next type of guru who is able to give paramatic shraddha, transcendental shraddha, or transcendental faith, is the example is given of Shukadev Goswami. That Shukadev Goswami, after um, coming from the womb of his mother Vitika, then he left, and Shula Vyasadev, by some transcendental arrangement, then he brought Shukadev Goswami back, and then he spoke to him Srimad Bhagavatam. That same Shukadev Goswami later, he spoke Srimad Bhagavatam to Parikshit Maharaj and all the sages. He is an eternally liberated soul. His eternal form is that he is Shuka, the parrot, the parrot of Srimati Radhika. But he's playing the part of a sadhak who has gone, who has achieved the stage of Bhav. On the platform of Stai Bhav, there's Vibhav, Anubhav, um, as, as, Vyabhachari Bhav, Asasatvik Bhav. And coming, when there's the mixing of these different Bhavs, then when they become one ingredient that's extremely tasteful, where you cannot distinguish the different elements, this is Bhakti Ras. Before coming to the stage of praying, when there's no more kasoy, no more impediments within the heart, then that devotee will leave the body and take birth in a planet where, in a universe where Krishna is performing his pastimes. This is called um, Nidut Kasoy, that within his heart there's no impediments. And the last type of guru, who is giving this transcendental faith, is Narada Muni, after going to Vaikuntha and coming back in his transcendental body. He is, he is coming from Vaikuntha, or those who are coming from Vraj, from Golok Vrindavan, they're called Bhagavad Prashad Deha Prat. So these three types of gurus, they never fall down. What to speak of these three types of gurus? Gurudev was explaining that even one who achieves the stage of Ruchi, Asakti, that is very, very rare, that such personalities will fall down. Because even within their heart, the splendor of Baal, Rati, is coming within their heart, the Surup Shakti. So it is stated that if one wants to achieve happiness, one wants to know truth, then one should approach such type of guru. What is the meaning of the word guru? Guru means andaka, darkness, and ru means enlightenment. Guru, one who is enlightened with this Rup Shakti, and by his presence, by his harikata, and by his mercy, then he removes the ignorance which is within the heart of the devotee who is surrendering in a humble way. So tat vidi pranipatena, pariprasnena sevaya. That one should approach such guru and do pranipat, means offering obeisances, surrendering. This surrender means that, oh, I'm offering myself to you. I'm offering everything. But we should be careful that we should offer ourselves to one who actually is guru, one who has Surup Shakti, one who has that potency to remove all these things. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur, he gives a very nice example. 
explains that once there was a blind person and he wanted to go to the house of his in-laws. So one person, he called him and he said, oh, you come and you hold on to the tail of this bull and you don't let go. So then he held on and then the bull feeling this um, pulling on his tail immediately started to run. And then the bull ran through so many rocks, through so many thorns, through so many bushes. And the person was being cut in his head, his face, his body completely cut. But he just thought, don't let go. And then the bull kept on going until it got to the house of the in-laws. The in-laws, they saw this person holding on to the bull. And they were thinking that, oh, this person is a thief. He's trying to steal the bull. The person was so disfigured, they could not see that it was their in-law. So they took sticks. They beat him, beat him, beat him, beat him, took rocks, and beat him some more. So Srila Bhaktis, and then he fainted. Srila Bhaktis Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur explains that this is the reaction that one will get if one approaches a guru, a so-called guru who's not qualified, but actually is like kangaroo. That you offer your everything to him, but actually, he has not got Srupa Shakti. He himself is full of anatas. How can he remove the anatas which are within the heart? So, Tasmat, um, Tat Vidi Pranipatena Pari Prasnena Sevaya Bhupadeksyanti Te Gyanam Tat Dashinaha. That he's Tat Padashi. That he has darshan, he has vision of Advaya Gyan Paratatva, Shama Sunda Krishna, the Supreme Absolute Truth. And because he has that darshan, uh, he knows what is his suroop and he knows what is the suroop of the um, person who's approaching and he's very expert in removing all kinds of anatas and bringing us and taking us to the lotus feet of Shri Shri Radha and Krishna where we'll be eternally. Yes. So we should try to know all these facts. <laughs> Even anyone was not good. But acting or posing like Guru, and he was so powerful speaker that he convinced so many thousands of devotees. And all these devotees in Kumal Shraddha, uh, we were chanting something. But his Guru was not like this, and after some time he fell down. We cannot tell, tell them fall down because from the beginning he was fall down. So now in the eyes of common persons he is fall down. Then what should we do? If he will think that still he is my guru, then he will never have pure heart. Krishna Prem will not come. Your suffering will not go. Because when you will chant, you should do pranam to your guru. And you are doing pranam to that person, that who has fallen. out. What have he to do? If you do archan of Thakurji, or you will have to worship your guru. But who is guru? If you are thinking that Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj is my guru, Oh, it will not do. There should be a living by which you can hear directly. So, for this, it has been written in ethics. So the Jiva Goswami has collected all the evidences that quickly we should give up and take a shelter of bona fide really good. Whether he is in Madhamat Karinoha, he should be very sincere, very sincere. And he is following the lines of Guru and practicing pure bhakti, especially bhav bhakti, object. Then we can take him as a Guru, no harm. And thus he will show you our superior. In this way, we should try to. Now, many examples of this. If Uttama Bhakti, there is. Then Madhyama and Kanishta Bhakti is there. If pure Bhakti, there, there should be impure Bhakti. So, Dhruva 
he took darshan of Krishna in the form of Narayana. It was bhakti, especially Sarup Siddhava. But why he could not attain Rajapain? What defect was there? So some defect. What defect? Madhavar. Tell first the life history of Dhruva and then such this one. You should try to carefully hear and to understand. If you are not understanding, oh please ask. By question, we will help you. <laughs> So, Srila Guruja, what do you mean? That why Srila Dhruva Maharaj could not attain Braja Bhakti? So, first we have to know who is Dhruva Maharaj. What he did in his life. Dhruva Maharaj was son of Uttanpad. He had two wives. One is Suniti, another Suruchi. Suniti means who always maintained and regulated by good rule and regulation, especially by Bhagavad Bhakti. Another one, Suruchi means who always so much material test, Suruchi. Suruchi had one son named Uttam, and Suniti had another son, Dhruva. One day, King was seated down with his second wife, Suruchi. And Uttam and Dhruva both are playing nearby. Uttam took seat on father's lap. Seeing this, Dhruva also came and wanted to sit in the lap of his father. But his stepmother told, Oh, Dhruva, you are not qualified to sit on your father's lap. Unless until you will not die and take what from my own. You are not qualified to see on your father's lap. Dhruva Maharaj became so upset, became so angry, and it penetrated in his heart. Weeping bitterly, he came to his mother, Suniti Devi. Mother wanted to specify him at, his, at her level best, but Dhruva is continuous weeping, bitterly lamenting. Mother told, What is the cause of your weeping? Please tell me. Then Dhruva was serving so much and told that my stepmother told like this sarcastic word for me. She said, oh my dear son, for this insignificant thing you are sorry. If you sit on the lap of Bhagavan, then you can sit on the whole universe. What to say about this small kingdom? So you can do bhajan of your Bhagavan. Where he lives? Where he lives in the forest. Oh, really? Well, yes. And Suniti was pacify him. After that, night came with the influence of time, calm. Suniti specified Dhruva and make him sleep. And Dhruva, Suniti Devi also slept well. But Dhruva was not sleep at all. He was taking chance when my mother will fall asleep, I shall run away from here. When Suniti fall asleep, then Dhruva ran away from there and went to Madhuban, the bank of Yamuna. And you want to do bhajan of Krishna, want to do bhajan of Bhagavan. And Bhagavan became restless. Lakshmi Devi asked, Oh Prabhu, why you are so restless? Then Narayan told, One of my devotees want to do my bhajan, want to take my darshan. Lakshmi said, oh, Yes, go, you can give him darshan. No, I can't. Why not? He has no guru at all. Unless until you have no guru, Bhagavan will not give you darshan, not best to his.